You know, as young people, more often we get scared of talking about our challenges because we're thinking about someone else, not thinking about ourselves because we are the ones who are suffering. Youth need to share their experiences with others so that the youth would know my situation isn't better than yours. South Africa has the highest number of people infected with HIV in the world. In 2009, an estimated 5.6 million, that is so much, 5.6 million people were infected with HIV, including adults, which is 18% of them. And one in three women are infected caused by gender-based violence. Another mind-blowing fact is that one in three girls in Africa will be married before the age of 18 and one in nine before their 15th birthday. Now, over 30 million school-aged children are still out of school in Africa and almost 80 million, 80 million are forced to work to support their families. Let us bring hope to them. Africa, we can unite. Let us bring hope, light and peace and bring, bring life to them. Thank you very much. Amanda. Amanda. Gawetu. Um, good, good, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aten Kosifan. I'm down now at Eastern Cape. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my topic is about teenage pregnancy. What is teenage pregnancy? Teenage pregnancy is an unplanned pregnancy because of teenagers being irresponsible. Well, I have a poem that I also wrote. It, that it's entitled Awareness. Teenage pregnancy... Teenage pregnancy, what needs to be done to get the youth of today to listen? Yes, to venture is fun. Because every television effort is being done over, nobody seems to walk the path. Staying behind like a tire at the back of a Land Rover. Today, young teenagers, sorry, today, young teenage pregnancy is just a fashion of another season. Bringing orphans in this orphanage world for no reason. That's that's what young boys and girls are doing. This is a two-sided story. A story with no breeze. Intercourse, disease are killing us. Just for a simple cause. I am aware. Are you aware? Our parents should be transparent about the whole concept being of teen pregnancies. Meaning, our parents should not be afraid to tell us about sex. Our parents should be transparent. They have to hide nothing and tell everything. They have to show us the consequences of being pregnant. They have to highlight us about being, about being sexually active. For example, age restriction. You cannot take a seven-year-old child telling, tell her about teenage pregnancy. And parents have been doing a mistake, telling only, only the girls. But the point is, both agenda are involved. Both males and, and, and females have to be included in the sexual education. I thank you. Shh. There's a poem in my head. Shh. There's a campaign in my head. Where was the world when I was left alone? Where was the world where there was no life and left in the wilderness? I was following poverty. There was no life. Where was the world? Where was the world when I, have a vision, where I, when I had a vision to make a vision? Because my passion was mentioned by God. When I had to drop out of school and enjoy smoking taha, glue, benzene, where was the world? Where was the world when I had to rob people in order for me to embrace the un unemployment in my life? Where was the world? Where was the world and who do I have to blame for all these displacements? Who do I have to blame for all what has happened in my life? I'm not just a refugee, but I know where I come from. I am who I am because of I have a vision to make someone pr be proud of me. I want to be a hero. I want to be a loved one. I lost both of my parents, not because of I love to, because of I want to, to be like all these children. I had to... I had to lie when I was with my friends. I had to lie because I, want to, I didn't want it to be left out because of my parents. I wanted to be the one who was mentioned as a best person. But was, when I was traveling refugee camp to refugee camp, I saw a pregnancy 
growing up like hearts plants each and every day. The clouds turned out to be black and I didn't know where to go, but sit under the bridge begging for food just for me to live happily. I don't know what, where to go. I want to reach my, 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 my own dreams. I, I'm rich in mind, but poor in life. I know where I come from, and this is what I am. I have to embrace the world, and I, I, have, to not, I have to not give up in my life. Thank you. And I am going to be presenting about crime, vi violence, and gangsterism. We, as the children, are vulnerable to these. The orphans, the child-headed families, and young people who walk long distances, they suffer from robbery, they, are, they get injured, they are murdered, they are kidnapped, they are raped, they are abused, sexually, physically, and emotionally. But our vision is we want to build and create a generation that is free of crime, of violence, and of gangsterism. When you are dreaming, or you have a vision, you need to start with the leaf and think about the tree and then end up having a forest in mind. So, I'm in front of you, I'm, I have a vision of education. What the country will be like if everybody was educated? So, the vision I have in front of you is an equal and quality education. The equal and quality education that will bring the economic growth and we will live in our country free without discrimination and the, in the workplaces there will be a lot of diversity. And then when you are talking about the economic growth, there's going to be a lot of employment to those who struggle on getting jobs. We see the economic activities increase. Remember, when the economic activities increase, also the standard of living increase because of education. Secondly, the provision of resources. In our school, there's a lack of stationaries. There's a lack of building. The government expects that children or learners who are in rural areas and the learners who are in urban areas must reach the same percentage, but the stationery is not the same. The material they use, it's not the same. The last thing that government, that I'm dreaming, or I have a vision, is the qualified teachers. Sometimes we need qualified teachers. The teachers, when you will ask a question, he will give you an answer, not return the question to you. That is my vision of education. Thank you. I'm a 19-year-old teenager guided by my 86-year-old grandmother. Um, I, have three, I have two siblings, my elderly sister, who is a mother of two, and an elderly brother, who is a drug addict. We grew up separately. Um, we used to live with different relatives separately. And then there came a time whereby only my mother's sister was left in their entire family, hence she had her own children. And that is when my grandmother took me in. She is not my actual grandmother, hence she is my grandmother's sister, but she has always been my role model and my strength. Coming from a disadvantaged family, whereby only our grandmother was the provider, had a negative influence in my life. Um, nevertheless, the foster care did make a difference in our household income. Uh, she supports me and her other grandchildren, but having her as the only provider is a burden in mind considering her health and her age. Looking at where I come from and looking at my background had a negative influence in my academics, considering the fact that I was not the born intelligent. I have always had a dream, even before I started school. I dreamt of becoming a lawyer and creating a legacy for my family. I, I would sit with my fellow students at high school and they'll tell me to dream 
and they would say, only the sky is a limit. But weighing myself with the then current um, situation, looking at my background, I would just see that success and prosperity was not means for people like me. Considering the fact that my mother died when I was two years old and I never knew my father, whom is said to be dead as well. But it was only one day when a stone came knocking on my door, my fire stone. My child care worker is my fire stone, my pillar of strength. It was through her wise words that I learned that the circumstances of my birth should never define my life. As she would say that it's through education that I can make all of my dreams, hopes and aspirations a reality. She led me to the path of greatness and then I learned that we're all destined for great things. However, we are to help each other at all times so as to achieve greatness. She taught me, among other things, leadership skills. Not only to be a leader in my community and at school, but to be a leader of my own life. And she indeed, she brought out the young Nelson Mandela within me, the vigilant. And today I'm proud to say I'm a purpose-driven young woman. I am on a mission of making my vision a reality. With all the help I have received from Esibindi, together with my childcare worker and my social workers, they have donated clothes for me, they provide me with cosmetics, and they encourage me to ask for a registration fee from church so that I could go and study. I am proud to say that today, I am the first in my family to go to university. I believe, I believe that I am the first to graduate and I will not be the last to graduate. Yes. I am grateful to Isibindi and my Firestone because I know that they bring in warmth to other families and to all those childcare workers, continue making the fire burning because whatever you're cooking in that really good port, it is miracle. In here, Cape Town, when you're looking at under the bridges, you would notice that there are people there sleeping under the bridge, begging, asking for food. If, 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 if the, the, that's a challenge. People are, the youth are experiencing poverty. We are the ones who are affected by, most by poverty because some of us are child-headed, are from child-headed families. So we have to find something for ourselves. Then it's expensive education. We must face it, guys. Education is expensive. If you want to get real and reliable and perfect education, you must pay money. Even our president wouldn't take his child and put him or her in a rural school because that education is from a lower standard. We, as the youth of South Africa, have decided that despite all the challenges that you've heard previously, we chose to rise above our situation and look forward to a brighter future. That is why we have a vision, a vision of a well-developed South Africa made of educated citizens. As we all know, we have the challenge of education in South Africa. Meanwhile, if everyone is employed, we'll be able to get quality education, even go afford education abroad in one of the best universities, bring back the knowledge home, and educate our people, making this, this country a better country. We also have a vision of a South Africa with improved standard of living. We don't want the RDP houses that we have anymore. We want better housing for everybody. We want good sanitation. We want water. We want electricity. We want all those good things, guys. Just imagine yourself living your dream. You all have dreams inside of you, but because of your situations, you have decided to suppress them and settle for less. We, as the youth, have decided to say no for less, and we are going to fulfill our dreams. And in conclusion, I have a poem. And the title of the poem is, We Are the Answer. To the people who have lost hope, whose fire is all gone, we are the answer. 
to the people who are the victims of today, who are the survivors of tomorrow. We are the answer. To the people who are naked, not of clothing, but of human dignity, we are the answer. To the people who are hungry, not for food, but for love, we are the answer. To the people who are thirsty, not for water, but for guidance, we are the answer. 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 Thank you.